again. It's another Thursday. It's a trench tips TTT Thursday trench tips back in your ears. Wow. Okay. Well, I've not done my usual Jack Princeton with your face. Would you like me to start off with one of those? Mm, no. Moving on. <laughs> okay. Why would you like to? I don't want to it's take. Always, you... It's going to always be in my head if I don't do it. Okay. Go on and do it. Jack Frimston with your mm-hmm. face, like an underrepresented promise. Mm, not sure what it means, but cool. I like it. Uh, trench tips. So today I want to talk about the future. And I, I don't want to delve too deep into the future because the power of now, the power of wow, the power of ow, my life's okay. Why am I okay. worrying about the future? But it's something that I want everybody to worry about just a little bit. I want to talk about the, the state of sales for the future, okay? okay. Because I think probably we, we've now been in sales for over a decade, and what we've seen in the last 10 years with the, with the state of sales and technology, everything progressing, it's probably moved much further forward in the last 10 years than it has in the last 50 years, okay? So things are constantly changing, and fast forward another 10 years, it's going to be crazy, and I, and I wanted to use this episode to tell people why they need to invest in themselves now. And I'm not talking financial investment. I'm not asking for any money. I'm saying why they actually just need to get good at sales, but mm. for all aspects of life. <clears throat> okay, okay. I think that's a good shout. I actually saw a thing. Well, there's a few things there. <clears throat> Obviously, the stuff that takes next to no brain power AI is going to quite easily take over. Mm. Yeah. I was having a chat with our friend, Benjamin Danahay recently, and he was saying the bit that is the hardest to train in a salesperson is the thinking outside the box, thinking on your feet, rolling with the punches. What if you hear something you've never heard before? What if they throw you off here? How do you have a personality when it needs to be a totally different, you know, all that kind of thinking on your feet stuff. Mm -hmm. And the biggest obstacle AI has got to overcome at the minute is common sense struggles with anything to do with common sense but equally that's where most average salespeople struggle <laughs> struggle as well, as well. Yeah, yeah yeah what yeah. what are some of the um well let's let's check it out what what would you say some of the examples are of struggling with common sense for basic salespeople um so we, you might say i'll be honest uh it's a sales call do you want to hang off and let me have 30 seconds and someone might say is it about getting rid of my ex-wife which is what someone said to someone in our office and I know a lot of salespeople would struggle with that. I used to have a guy who worked here. He hung up the phone, looked at all panic, said, I didn't know what to say. Well, what did you get asked? He said, are we a recruitment company? <laughs> right. And are we a recruitment company? No. So what's the answer? No. No. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, should I call him back? Mm. Probably not. <laughs> Probably I, I, not I would, I would have thought so. But I've actually got, Jack, some shocking stats for you. They might be shocking. Some of them were shocking to me, but Mm. let me know what you think about this. So last year, more than 70% of salespeople missed target. Believe it or not believe it. I believe it, but I'm also shocked. Can both exist? They can both exist, but why do you think that's true? Uh, I think so many people... This, the same way, this, this, I, I think like the state, I, th- I think so many things have changed in sales in the last 10 years. What I think has probably remained the same is throwing salespeople in at the deep end and just watching them swim or sink. And like some people will mm. swim, brilliant. Okay, well, we'll keep those and we'll pay them more money. And some people will sink and we'll just get rid of them. And then they go to another sales company, miss target. And then you, you, if you work in sales, you're never going to struggle to get a job. And most salespeople can sell themselves. But this is why I'm saying for salespeople, it's so important to invest in yourself, read the books, listen to the podcast, watch the YouTube videos, do the things that you need to do. Like if you, if you put in like an hour a day for a year, you're probably going to be in the top 5%, top 1% of salespeople. Like it doesn't take, a, you know, you know that I, I sent you this stat the other day about podcasting. Like if you've got more than 21 episodes, you're in the top 10%. If it's more than 50, you're in the top 1% or something stupid like yeah. that. We're in the top 1% of podcasts and we've only been doing it a few years, but you just got to be consistent. So it doesn't take a lot to, to get good or, or be in the top, but you've got to do the thing. And a lot of people aren't doing the thing. And it's like, do you want to be in the 30%? 
what what's the what's the i'll give i'll give you this what's the thing that two of our employees when we asked them why they hit commission that month what was the answer i had to exactly both of them said it without each other in the room both the same response or because i had to I had no option to not hit mm. target so what's your why uh, and, and that's it yeah. he who has i'm gonna butcher it but he who but has need you yeah, I was going to. He who has a why can bear anyhow. Yeah, you're about on the right lines. Thanks, mate. With the right why, you're able to bear anyhow. There we go. There are my swipes. What? Go, go on. Give me another one then. I'll give you another one. I'll give you. I'll give you two more. I'll give you two more. Um, Twenty-three percent of sellers. So if you imagine a hundred percent of sellers across the business, twenty-three percent of sellers are contributing eighty-three percent of the revenue. Ah, uh, well, that's just Pareto's law at its finest, isn't it? It is, but you know I've just eaten. I've had a Pareto for my lunch. <laughs> I, I'm sure you have. Beans and rice. And that is, and, and that is, which which salesperson do you want to be? I know that as we as we face, and this is the things, right? As we face recessions and pandemics, and history repeats itself. You 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 only have to read uh, Morgan Housel's book to to things stay the same different different kind of context but things are just repeatable so like we know that all these things are going to come around again if you are in the top 20 percent of sellers and another recession or another pandemic comes around you're okay you're protected you're fine but if you are on the other side and you're the the guy or girl that's not hitting quota and you're not bringing in the revenue well you, you've got and people go yeah but i've been there two three years or i've been there five years or it's not fair I think like, people don't see it from a an employee standpoint, do they? They don't see it as like a there's a business to run. So like I think it's a question you've got to ask, ask yourself. Like let me ask you, like why did you decide to get good at sales? There was a point where you was okay, uh, you was hitting, but why did you decide? No, I've always been unbelievable, but there okay. was a point where helpful. No, sorry, no, I was always all right. Yeah, and then there was a point where I had to get good because. In my mind, sales was something that I was going to stick at for a bit until something else came along. Mm. And then I was having my first son and I thought, right, here's what I'm doing. I need to get good at this. And that was the words, I need to get good at this. And then I really examined my game and was like, what are the bits that that don't work or where do I lose things and how do I get better at that? So it wasn't just reading a sales book, hoping for the answer. It was like... Yeah oh, I'm crap at that objection. What's a book on just objections or why people make decisions in the first place or why they, you know, like why they ask certain things. Mm -hmm. It's like getting really granular with each bit, but that was why. Um, why did you decide to get good at it? I'm still thinking about it. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm still working on yeah. it. I'm, yeah, yeah, that's fair. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you got um, another fact for me? Yeah, I'll give you one more. I'll give you one more and then... Um, Tell me what you think of this. I think this is quite an interesting one. So think of like getting an opportunity in the pipeline. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then not uh, seeing it through. So it's an opportunity. You've actually done a good job. You've got a good demo, a good discovery, whatever it may be. And there's an opportunity generated there. The deals that then slip away that don't become anything or a record breaking high, 39% of deals that reach that point slip away. People just don't follow up with them, find out what's happening, they go cold. It's surprised and not surprised at the same time. Um, 39%? I, I, would, I, would say, I would say there's probably a few reasons why I would say that there are probably opportunities going in there that shouldn't be opportunities. And I, I've seen it firsthand with organizations. If you look in your pipeline and there's not a next step in concrete, I am doing, so I, you could show me 10 opportunities and I go, what's happening with them? Oh, I'm talking to them here. I'm following up with them this. We have a call here. If it's just, a, oh, I'm not sure I need to chase them. Well, that's where it slips away. Like you've got to be in control. Like you've got to know what's going on. Mm. Why do you think it is? Well, I just wonder why you're on that, because I think that's a really good tip. Obviously, I don't really like you very much, but you do say things sometimes, and I think, okay, maybe he's onto something. Um, that's a good one. Next step. The other one is test yourself on the language you've got. 
So someone was to sit in front of you and ask you like interrogatory, maybe a word, maybe not. Um, But if they were to interrogate you about that potential opportunity and say like, how are they making decisions? When's it going to happen? All that sort of stuff. And the language you use is they might, I think, take it out. Not worth it. No. Not worth having it in there. You just want yeses or noes. You don't want maybe. So I think that's the contributor. Another contributor, I think, is the pandemic was a funny time for software companies. People wanted to keep money moving. So what would happen is there was all this investment money into software companies. And I know that the way people feed back information to investors is in uh, very top level numbers, mm. meetings booked, opportunities generated. So they're almost incentivizing the salespeople to, yeah, make, make put it down as an opportunity. Yeah, make it as an opportunity. It's fine, put it down for three months. It's gonna, we wanna chase it back in three months. They're not making it very concrete to keep the shareholders happy. So it is a real top down issue. I don't think it's just mm. on the salespeople. It's no. probably that's how they're targeted and incentivized as well. I agree. You, you took the words like like you said. No respect or love here for you from me. But I, yeah, in agreement. Um, I I just think it's one of those. It's like if if you've got sales directors or sales managers that are promoting that behaviour, then it's just like we we've seen it first and with organisations. What is the point? What is the point in having that in there? Just well, I know what the point is. It keeps everybody in work. Um, I'm going to test people who listen to the whole episode here. Yeah? If you've listened to the whole episode and you message me on LinkedIn and say, Jack's a mug, I'll give you 50 quid. <laughs> okay, you better, you, better, you better stick with that. I'm just um, curious to see if people listen to it up to this point. Um, and if you are still listening, you've done that, message Jack and he'll get it paid for you. <laughs> okay, I've got your bank details. Don't worry, you think I don't know all your passwords. <laughs> Uh, right, okay, well, we'll end on that. No, I, I think that was a good episode as to why you should get good at sales. Get good before it's too late because there's a robot with no common sense coming to take you out if you've also got no common sense. All right? Can I ask you a question if I let you go? You. Are you sure? Okay. Have you ever been tested for anything? <laughs>